Lord Jesus. Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, we turn our hearts to you, Lord. Thank you for this gathering. Thank you that you are gathering us. Oh, around your word. Lord, grant us ears to hear tonight. Oh, what the Spirit is speaking to the churches. Amen. We are so dependent on you, Lord. Thank you. You are a speaking God. Oh, you want to bring us into your heart's desire, even in this matter of your coming. Lord, we just fully open to you. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. I hope you can all hear me okay. Amen. I'm here in Amsterdam, and I see that many of you are from different parts of the world. This is a wonderful opportunity. I saw some of you I know and some of you I don't know. But praise the Lord, we are all in the same move of the Lord. Amen. So if we come to this matter of the Lord's coming, you know, there's a lot of speaking nowadays, even among Christians, um, about the Lord's coming. And it always stirs up our curiosity, um, you know, if we hear uh, things about the Lord's coming, and we, even in our recent circumstances with this pandemic or pan, with this um, virus that is going around, that many saints are looking to the heavens and they think, well, the Lord wants to come back. And I think certainly the Lord wants to come back. Um, but we will see in this outline his heart's desire because his uh, coming back is always related uh, to his eternal economy. So it's, it's, it doesn't stand by itself. And it's also not a matter of, you know, many Christians think that the Lord can return tomorrow. Well, maybe he can, but there needs to be something on the earth he comes back to. And, and that's why our, we are gathering here tonight to just look at the speaking of the Lord. So that is his direct speaking to us, right? So last week it was about the Old Testament. And this week it's about the New Testament. And this is the speaking of the Lord Jesus concerning his coming. So this is his direct speaking of the Lord himself. So we really need to take heed to his word, right? Because in Matthew, the disciples ask him, what are the signs of your coming? You know, we always want to have outward signs, right? We want to read the signs in the world situation um, and then think, well, maybe we can calculate, you know, numerous Christians have try to calculate when the Lord would return. Um, I think the disciples in their time already were thinking that the Lord would come back in their time. Well, we are 2,000 years down the line, and the Lord has not returned yet. So what will bring him back? So this is really what we want to get into, because we can look at the signs, and we will see some signs here, but... It's, it's more related also to God's economy, which is that God is dispensing himself into us. So we all need to be reconstituted with Christ. It's not just an outward matter. It's not just an outward coming. He needs to come from within us. So we need to be reconstituted with Christ to become his bride. Because that is actually how the Bible ends, right? wonderful in revelation that in eventually there in revelation 22 17 it says and the spirit and the bride say come amen so here the spirit and the bride speak with one voice uh, so they have become one but in order for us uh, to become the bride of christ yeah we need to mature in life we need to grow in life and we also are the ones that take heed to his word. Um, and I think tonight, you know, what the Lord desires from us is our cooperation, right? We need to cooperate with him uh, to be prepared because there needs to be some preparation in us before the Lord can come back. 
he needs to have this bride has made herself ready, right? If we read in Revelation 21 verse 2, it says she's prepared as a bride, right? Adorned for her husband. And then in 197, it says, let us rejoice and exalt. Let us give glory to him for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. So this is really uh, the burden tonight is that we need to see that we need to be made ready for the Lord's coming. So he gave us, he's, he's coming. If we look at the book of Matthew, right? That is what we are mainly in and also in Revelation. Then we see that he comes in a sixfold way, right? He comes as the lightning. He comes as a vulture. He comes as a bridegroom. He comes as the son of man. And he comes as the morning star and also as a, as a thief. Well, we will not look at all of them tonight. So we're going to look uh, to these matters of where he comes as lightning, where he comes as the bridegroom and the morning star and the thief. So praise the Lord. If we, if we look at Roman numeral one, it says, for just as the lightning comes forth from the east and shines to the west, so will the coming of the son of man be. So we have to see in this point that there are two aspects to the Lord, to the Lord's coming. And one is a secret aspect and the other one is an open aspect. So if we speak about this matter of the lightning that comes from the east and shines to the west, that is the open aspect related to God's coming. But there is this secret aspect, which is not seen, right? It says the second coming of Christ has two aspects, the secret aspect related to his watchful believers and the open aspect related to the unbelieving Jews and Gentiles. So the, the open aspect is not really related to us. You know, we are not unbelieving Gentiles anymore, right? Amen. We have all received the life of the Lord within us. Amen. So we are the ones that has to care for this secret aspect of the Lord. Amen. So it says here the lightning signifies the open aspects which will take place after the great tribulation and the thief's coming signifies the secret aspect which will occur before the great tribulation. Well, we will still speak a lot about this matter of a thief because that is one of our points on the outline. Um, so we see that the Lord, his coming is, is a process. Um, so that, that's what they call parousia. That is the Lord's presence. So when the overcomers are called up to the throne of God, then his parousia starts. That is before the great tribulation. And then during, his, during the great tribulation, he will be in the air, right? And then at the end of the great tribulation, he will be this, this lightning that comes forth, and then he will come to the earth. And in that matter, we will join him because he wants all of us to be in this secret aspect of his coming. I hope we believe that. I, I know many young people, and even myself, if we think about the Lord's coming, I don't know what your thought is. But many times if I think of the Lord's coming, um, then I think, oh Lord, I'm not ready. I don't know if you feel the same way. I think many of us feel the same way that the requirement, sometimes we think the requirement is, is so high and then we do introspection and we look at ourselves and we, we say, well, I will never make it. Well, praise the Lord, you're not meant to make it. Oh, we received a life into us that is fully able uh, to make us part of this secret aspect of his coming. This is really his desire. So we should not be afraid of the Lord's coming. But on the other hand, we also need to have this aspiration um, to be one with him, to 
be with him every day. You know, we might think, well, when the Lord comes, all the things will happen. But what I did today is also in the light of his coming. Uh, the, how I live today has to do with his coming. Um, he wants to dispense himself uh, into us and make us all ready and make us all part of this, of this secret aspect of his coming. So I hope that we will have a heart full of faith tonight to believe his word, right? I'm, I'm sure that the Lord's desire is that all of us will be ready and we will be, we will be made his bride and we will be ready to meet him. Amen. So the Lord's coming is like a flash of lightning striking the earth. And that will be a sign of the end of the Lord's parousia and implies the Lord is like electricity. <laughs> so we will become part of this lightning because if we are called up into the air and be part of his parousia during the great tribulation, then when, when he strikes the earth, we will be fully one with him, right? So this is kind of a, a corporate lightning. Amen. So what is wonderful here that, you know, the, the Pharisees asked the Lord for a sign. And he said, I will not give you a sign. I will only give you the sign of Jonah. And then we know that Jonah was for three days in the big fish, right? We all know the story. But what is wonderful here, so if it comes to the Lord's coming, what is important? What, what we see in this sign of Jonah is we see that Christ is crucified and that he is resurrected. So this is, this is in the light of his coming. So in his process, he became the life-giving spirit, right? So he was crucified. He was resurrected. Today, he's the life-giving spirit oh, to give life to our whole being, right? He starts off by giving life to our spirit. So I hope we can all declare tonight, my spirit is life. I hope your spirit is life. We should even declare this in faith, that our spirit is life because of righteousness. And then we also know that he wants to continue his dispensing into us, right? So that he can come into our soul. Because this is where the preparation takes place. It's mainly in our soul. Because our bodies will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. But we are now in this process where the Lord, as the life-giving spirit, came into us to do a preparation work. Oh, to make us into his bride. I hope really that we would be impressed by this. You know, he gives the spirit not by measure. So there's a bountiful supply in us all. You know, a few weeks ago, we had this um, class in the full-time training in London about the spirit. And we looked at 161 functions of the spirit. So we started off in, in Genesis 1-2, where the Spirit of God was brooding over the face of the earth. Now that Spirit could not enter into us, right? So then he was the Spirit of Jehovah. He was related to man. Then he was the Spirit of holiness. Then we read of the Holy Spirit um, with, the, um, with the birth of the Lord Jesus, right? The conception of Jesus. And then we see that in his resurrection, right? In John 7, 39, it says the spirit was not yet because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now he is. And he is now the life-giving spirit. He is a bountiful supply. He is the compound spirit to do what? Just to make you happy or to give you a successful Christian life? No, to bring us into this preparation for his bride. Because that's how the Bible ends, right? The spirit and the bride. Now they have become one. So I hope we can, we can see this. So if we look at Roman numeral two, we have this wonderful story of the 10 virgins. Oh, I'm, I'm always so impressed when, whenever I read this portion of the word. Because what it really shows us that the Bible is a divine romance, right? Here we have him as the bridegroom, right? Waiting for his bride. It says here, at that time, the kingdom of the heavens 
will be likened to ten virgins who took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Amen. So, how did we meet tonight? Did we come online to meet our bridegroom? Is this our thought? Is this our relationship with the Lord? Well, that should be, right? We can think, well, this is all at the end of times when the Lord comes to get his bride. Amen. But we have to come forth, right? Every time we go forth to meet our bridegroom. So tonight is a marvelous opportunity for us, oh, to meet with our bridegroom. That means there is a loving relationship with him. That's why we say that the Bible is a divine roman romance, right? Amen. So in 2 Corinthians 11, 2, it says, I have betrothed you to one husband to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. Amen. I, I hope that, well, this whole story, you know, uh, I grew up in uh, Christianity and this matter was always explained to us that the five uh, prudent ones were really saved and the, and the foolish ones were unsaved. Well, that cannot be, right? Because all of them are virgins and virgins is for purity and they are all waiting for the bridegroom. Do you think an unbeliever will wait for the bridegroom? No. So they are all regenerated. But the, the difference between them was that the five wise virgins had extra oil. Well, we all get oil when we get regenerated, right? Oh, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So when we get regenerated, oh, we received oil in our spirit. Okay, but is that it? So now we have our ticket uh, to go to heaven and we just wait for the days to go by. Well, that's what many, many Christians believe. But thank, thank the Lord for, for this ministry, this betrothing ministry that brings us to Christ as our bridegroom. And we see here that, uh, I already mentioned it, that that preparation is mainly in our soul, right? So we see that the 10 or the five wise virgins had extra oil in their vessels. And that means they had extra oil in their soul, right? Amen. So they allowed the Lord, oh, to enter into their heart, to enter into their mind, emotion, and will. Oh, so that there could be a transforming work in the soul to make us ready to meet our bridegroom. Amen. So, hallelujah, we have all oil. We have all oil in our spirit, right? But now this oil needs to spread. It spreads into our mind. Would you allow him in? Oh, to come into your mind? Would you allow him to come into your emotion and your will? Well, this is part of our preparation. If we allow him, then he will make us part of this secret aspect. Oh, may the Lord have mercy on us. So we are the virgins. Amen. We are going. And Christ is the bridegroom and he is coming. Amen. So there's, there's this traffic going on, right? We are going. We are opening up to him. And then he is coming to us. Oh, to supply us so that we can fall in love with him. I hope that, that all of you are crazy lovers of Jesus because this is really what we need, right? Because in the Bible, we have a universal couple, the bridegroom and the bride. In his coming back, Christ will be the bridegroom coming for his bride. Is this our relationship with the Lord? Do we have this kind of intimate, affectionate relationship with the Lord. You know, I, I still remember when I met my wife, you know, I fell crazily in love with her. And she was the only person I could think of. She was the only person I wanted to be with. This is a perfect picture of what the Lord desires from us, right? Amen. And I can, I can declare after 33 years of marriage, I'm still crazy about this woman. 
Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, may the Lord keep our love for him fresh and new every day, right? Amen. So the reign of God, the kingdom, is related to the merits of Christ, and the merits of Christ is the issue of the completion of God's eternal economy. That's why I started off to say that this matter of the Lord's coming is related to God's eternal economy, right? And if you read in, um, in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, I, I just want to read you that verse because it's, it's so wonderful. Um, 2 Corinthians 2, 9, 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Things which eyes with which I has not seen, and ear has not heard, and which have not come up in man's heart, things which God has prepared for those who love him. Amen. So to love him is an indispensable requirement. So we have to set our whole being on him. We oh, we just should. Oh, we just should tell the Lord every time, Lord Jesus, I love you. I wonder if we can do that right now, wherever we are, just to say, Lord Jesus, I love you. Amen. He is such a lovable person. And he is drawing us, oh, to be his bride. I hope we will all be impressed by this fact. So the main ingredient for a bridegroom is love, right? Amen. So there was also this problem, in, uh, if you read in Revelation 2, 4, you know that the church in Ephesus, the Lord said, I have one thing against you, uh, that you left your first love. And your first love is your best love, right? Oh, may the Lord have mercy on us, you know, to... Just rekindle our love to him every morning. I don't know how your morning was. I don't know how you start your day. But many times I, I have this habit just to, to go outside before I do anything. Just go for a walk and just declare my love to the Lord. And that's always so supplying. Amen. So God's economy in the New Testament is to obtain for Christ a bride the church, through his redemption and divine life. So it's through his redemption, right? In his redemption, he came into us, right? So our standing is in Christ. We can never be the bride of Christ in ourselves. But hallelujah, we are redeemed. Amen. So that the divine life could enter into us. That's why John 10.10 10 says, you know, that, Oh, that you may receive life. He came that you might have life and have it abundantly, right? That life is fully able, oh, to make us the bride for Christ, to prepare us to be the bride for Christ. He will save us to the uttermost. Amen. So by the continual working of the Holy Spirit throughout the centuries, this goal will be reached. Do you believe this? that this goal will be reached at the end of this age, then the bride, the overcoming believers, will be ready, and the Lord will come. Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus, we love you. Thank you for drawing us. Thank you for loving us first, and that your love has been poured out into our hearts so that we can love you in return. Oh, we should never grow tired. You know, from telling the Lord that we love him. This is such a sweet, sweet, short prayer, right? Just to say, Lord Jesus, I love you. Amen. Then you're just filled with, with love for him, right? Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus. Okay, then to him I will give the morning star. That is in Revelation 2.28, right? And this morning star appears at a darkest hour before dawn. Amen. So what does that imply? Well, it says here, again, there's an open aspect 
and a secret aspect. So we have to keep that in mind, right? If we think about the Lord's coming, keep in mind there is this secret aspect and there is the open aspect, right? So for him, in his coming back, Christ will be the morning star secretly as a reward to his overcomers who watch for his coming. To all others, he will appear openly as the sun. Amen. Well, you might think, well, to overcome is, is just for a few. Well, it is true that the majority of the believers, uh, he will appear to them as the sun. But praise the Lord, he is fully able. Do we believe our feeling? Do we believe what we think about ourselves? Or do we believe the word of God? Do we believe that he is fully able? Because the overcomer is actually just a normal Christian. It's not a, a special or, or a giant Christian. It's just a normal Christian. Oh, may he repeat, appear to us as the morning star. We don't see him, right? Isn't that true when you walk with the Lord and you talk to the Lord that you have this thought, well, Lord, you can see me, but I cannot see you. But he is the life-giving spirit within us, right? Amen. So he is available. Amen. Amen. So may he appear to us, oh, as the morning star. Amen. And then we will become the shining stars with him. Shining with him. That is the new Jerusalem, right? It will just shine out all the glory, the enlarged glory of, of, of God, because we became part of that. Amen. He said in uh, Revelation 21, 16, I am the bright morning star. And then he says the next verse is verse 17 that says, and the spirit and the bride say, come. So they are related, right? To be the bright morning star, to be part of the bright morning star is to be the bride. Amen. So in the kingdom, the Lord will appear publicly to, the, to his people as the sun that is visible. Before the great tribulation, he will appear privately to his overcomers as the morning star. So we need to learn to come to him, right? We need to learn, oh, to come to his word. Oh, we need to have a private time with the Lord where he can appear to us as the morning star. You know, I was thinking about what um, Margaret Barber said one day. She said, um, if you love your bed, you cannot love the Lord. So, amen. You know, many mornings when I wake up, I think, oh, I wish I could just stay a little longer, right? Just, oh, just 10 more minutes. Oh, just half an hour. But amen, it's such a blessing. Oh, to get up and go and have your private time with the Lord. Amen. So only his loving seekers will see this sign, right? Are you a loving seeker of the Lord? Do you have an intimate relationship with him? Well, amen. So what, what impressed me so much that if we speak about uh, the Lord in his coming, it all has to do with how we live, right? How we live today. It's not something that's just going to happen at the end, although that event will take place. But now we are in the days of preparation, right? Amen. So if you have to prepare for, for an exam, you know, you are in preparation, right? And uh, I was talking to a new one uh, just yesterday and, and I used this, this example, you know, that uh, he said, for instance, um, he said to me, well, the Lord, you know, we were saved through grace. And now it seems there are so many other requirements. Uh, put upon us uh, in order to be part of those first fruits, right? 
Um, and then I just use that example. If, if, if I look back, if I had an exam um, and I, li I liked the subject, then it was for me no, no problem to go to the exam because I, I really loved some of my subjects in school or at university. Um, so if I was interested in something, then it was no big deal. I was actually looking forward uh, to the exam. Uh, so this is the, these are the days of preparation for us. But if we don't care and have a careless living today, how can we expect then that he will be the morning star to us? So, so we give him some time in the morning. Oh, before we start our days. Oh, just to declare our love to him. You know, many times when I walk outside, I don't have that much to say to the Lord. I really don't have that much to say. I just say, Lord, I love you. Here I am. I, I just would like to learn from you to open myself to you. You know, when um, at Christ's first appearing, the Magi, not a Jewish religion, religionist, saw Christ's star, right, in Bethlehem. At his second coming or appearing, Christ will be the morning star to his overcomers who watch for his coming. So we have to be those who watch for his coming, right? Okay, then we have that wonderful hymn here, hymn 200. Oh, thou also art the morning star to us as a reward. While still it is dark, it shines with light to those who love the Lord. Lord, help us ere to love thy light and see things from afar and look for thee in watch and prayer as for the morning star. Amen. May we, oh, may we just rekindle our times with the Lord by declaring that we love him and allow him to come in so that he can come and steal us, right? That is the last point here. If therefore you will not watch, I will come as a thief, and you shall by no means know at what hour I will come upon you. He will come as a thief, right? Amen. And it refers here to Reve Revelation 3.3, 3, which is a letter to the church in Sardis, who had a name that they were living but actually, they were dead. So the question would be to all of us, are we living? And I don't mean just living in an outward way. You know, some of us think that the louder we shout in a meeting, um, the more spiritual we are or the more we touch our spirit. Well, that could be. I'm not saying that ca that cannot be, but it's not so much outward, right? Amen. Are we living? Are we intensely living? Are we intensely shining? How can we be like that? Well, the Lord became the sevenfold intensified spirit. Don't you think that he is sevenfold intensified? He wants to make us intensely living and intensely shining so that he can come and steal us. Do you want to be stolen by the Lord? Well, if a, if a thief comes, he only steals precious things, right? So what is precious in us? You know, in um, 2 Corinthians 4, 7, it says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. So Christ is this treasure within us. So that precious thing is that, is that Christ is manifested through my living, right? A thief comes to steal precious things at an unknown time, time eh? He is not knocking at your door and say, I'm a thief. I'm, I'm going to rob you. No, he comes at an unknown time. So the Lord Jesus will come secretly as a thief to those who love him again and will take them away as his treasure. So for us to be a treasure, we, that requires maturity. It requires transformation of the soul. Oh, because Christ will come to steal valuable things, we should seek to be precious. Amen. So we seek to be precious, worthy of being stolen by him in his secret coming. 
Oh, I was so impressed just to see that matter that that he is the treasure, right? Oh, praise the Lord. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. He will come back for the Christ that has come to maturity in all of us, right? Amen. So then it says a normal Christian is one who is qualified to be stolen by the Lord. Are you a normal Christian? Would you consider yourself as a normal Christian? Well, if you are a normal Christian, then you are qualified. Praise the Lord to be stolen by the Lord. That is to be an overcomer. So for the Lord's coming as a thief, we need watchfulness and readiness. You know, I was so impressed. If, uh, I was thinking when I thought about being watchful and ready, there's this portion of uh, Margaret Barber. You know, she was, uh, I think Watchman Nee was perfected through her. So just allow me to read you this little paragraph here. According to what Brother Nee told me, Sister Barber was a person who always lived in the presence of the Lord. Would that not be wonderful to always live in the presence of the Lord? One day, Brother Nee went to see her. She was in another room while he was waiting in the living room. He told me that while he was waiting there, he had a deep sense of the Lord's presence there. She was a deep person in the Lord, and she composed a number of excellent hymns and that, that are in our hymnal. And then he says, furthermore, day by day, she was waiting for the Lord's coming back. On the last day of 1926, she was taking a walk with Brother Nee. When they turned the corner to another street, she said to Brother Nee, maybe as we turn this corner, we will meet him. She was a person waiting for the Lord's return. She lived and walked in the presence of our returning Lord. I never met her. That's Witness Lee who said this. But after I heard what Brother Nee told me, I received a great help. Amen. So, dear saints, we need to take heed of our spirit. We have to learn to exercise our spirit, right? Because he is the capacity to make us intensely living this is what we need to be we need to be intensely living you know that zoe life that went through the whole process and is now sevenfold intensified is operating within us for this one reason oh to make us the bride of christ so if we open that is what he asked from us right that we open so i hope we can learn just to open up to the lord Maybe in, even in your groups, you can speak a little bit about this, what it means to open to the Lord. Amen. And give him your cooperation. So we do that little, and then he does a lot. We just open the door this much, then he dispenses himself into us. This is our preparation, right? Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus. So I just want to finish off by this matter of being watchful uh, and being ready. You know, in, uh, also in Matthew, there's this, um, this picture of two women grinding at the mill, right? One is taken, one is left. And two men will be in the field. One is taken and one is left. So... How do we prepare for the Lord's coming? You know, it doesn't say here they were in a prayer meeting. No, they were working, right? Two were grinding at the mill. So they were doing their daily duties, right? And two were working on the field. And then one was taken and one was left. You know, I know a brother 20 years ago, he met with us for a while. And then he said, well, the Lord is going to return. You know what he did? He sold everything that he had. He moved to Israel 
and he said he's going to wait on um, on the Mount of Olives for the Lord to return. So, and this 20 years ago. So I'm I'm wondering if he's still sitting there and waiting. <laughs> oh, hallelujah! How we need to be normal Christians, right? Doing our normal things, daily things and necessities. We have to learn just to redeem the time, to seize every opportunity. Amen. You know, two will be in, in, in an exam. One is taken, one is left. You know, it's in our normal daily living that we gain the Lord. That is where we need to gain the Lord. You know, we oh, maybe have such a living and not just have a meeting life. You know, I was so touched. I don't know who of you saw this fellowship uh, that came out on the on the 29th. I think it was some fellowship of Brother Andrew Yu, where he uses this word reevaluate. He said we have to reevaluate our life. He said we have to reevaluate our church life. We have to reevaluate our uh, our service, right? And we also have to reevaluate our work. So, amen. We are in this kind of situation right now with this coronavirus. And I think the Lord really wants to do something. I, I hope that we would not have the thought that we will just go back, uh, if this is all over, that we will just go back to normal as if nothing had happened. I think these are, are signs to us, right? To draw us more to the Lord, to have this kind of living that while we are doing our daily duties, that we will gain the Lord and we will just declare our love to the Lord. You know, we would learn to pray unceasingly in whatever situations we are. Amen. So that we can be made ready. You know, that bride has made herself ready and we are now in this process. So let's just thank the Lord for his dispensing into us. And he is the one. He, he is the capacity within us, oh, to make us part of this wonderful bride. Amen. I think I will stop here. Praise the Lord.